Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And Boris Bones! Happy New Year. You guys are seeing this on January 1st, 2021. Away with 2020, let's start a whole new year off right. Um, I actually did this video three, four days before <laughs> New Year's because I'm ahead of the game with the scheduling. Yes, I still haven't taken a day off in about 85 days. Uh, I've had 85 straight videos, but uh, honestly, I just can't sit still in my house. You know, all I've been doing is uh, I've been watching the first few uh, few episodes of The Mandalorian. Wow, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I gotta watch it. You know. I wanted to show you guys what I got from my friend Andy from Jericho for Christmas. <laughs> you guys know in my videos I only wear Crocs and flip-flops for most of my videos. In the winter it's so cold I have to put boots on, right? So he bought me a pair of sneakers with the mowers and blowers colors. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I don't know if I'll ever wear them though, but they're nice. Thanks to my buddy, Andy from Jericho. Today on the agenda, I've got just some stuff that I have to take care of. Uh, I probably told you in a previous episode that my van, when I bought it a couple of years ago, it never had an antenna, it never had one. So I took an old antenna I had that I had lying around the garage. And it's not meant for the Ford, you know? It's meant for something else, I don't know what. Anyway, I just plugged the antenna wire into the back of the the uh, radio and the the reception sucks. So I had to kind of like jig a ground to it, whatever, and it still kind of sucks because it'll work for a while, but then when you go over a bump, the jigging gets loose and it's not grounded anymore, and so I lose radio reception. So finally I said, you know, in the year 2021, I'm gonna finally get the damn antenna fixed. So I went and bought this on eBay, it was cheap. It was like $13 or something, and it looks like it has a ground thing with jig, you know, a thing that grounds I don't know how am I gonna explain this, but you know, it, it's supposed to be grounded on the frame of the car, and then at the same time plugs into the radio. But I didn't have this part here that tightens onto the, you know, um, frame of the van. So we'll see if this antenna works better with my radio reception. I've got two new uh, security cameras that I'll be doing reviews at, but I'm going to be doing that over at my buddy Andy from Jericho's house. As you know from a previous episode, I got this 8.526 yard man dual stage snowblower from my friend Mike's lawn service Babylon. He gave it to me for free because his friend took it apart and he found it on the street and he gave it to me because he didn't want it. And neither did his friend. But he gave it this to me in pieces, okay? Uh, in my episode recently, I put it all back together again and tried to figure out what parts it was missing. Uh, because it's such a good running snowblower, strong, has heated grips, power steering, and a light, I figure it's a pretty premium uh, snowblower. It's not, I mean, it is an MTD, but it is a good model MTD, you know, and pretty strong, and the engine runs pretty well. Wheels are good. There's not a whole lot of rust. There's some surface rust here and there, which you expect from a snowblower, you know what I mean? Especially one that's 10 or 15 years old, you know? I think this might be a 2003 or 2010, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But, uh, so I finally ended up buying the parts. I spent about $45 on the parts. Uh, a housing, an impeller bearing, a flange for the impeller shaft, and uh, I forget, some other stuff, right? Maybe four things for this snowblower that I think will make the auger and impeller move. <laughs> uh, I did find the two belts that came with it. I just couldn't find it, but I have it. Anyway, today after, if I get my antenna fixed, you know, and I get good reception on my radio, I'm gonna kind of grind down and prepare these parts for um, when I get the parts in the mail and then I could just pop them on instead of my having to spend time cleaning it and stuff. So I'll just do all that now. I'm gonna take a wire wheel and just go over the rust over here plus some very dried grease around the worm gear here, right? This flange I ordered because the while the flange is still there, the side parts, the lip, it's all grinded down. This one's good, but I'm gonna clean all this stuff. Also, I'm gonna have to figure out a way for me to kind of 
redo the splines on this thing because like I said once the thing was taken off this spline it was dropped and there's a big dent here which causes it to go forward like that so I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I might have to just bang this in so at least I could fit that thing on here because it's kind of mushroomed out you know what I mean so I have to do that also I'm gonna take apart this impeller again, right? I'm just gonna take the auger sh uh, shaft, the axle, take it out and uh, soak the gearbox in gas because it's filled with grease. So I'm gonna do that later after I install my uh, radio antenna. So I'm here at my van. It looks pretty straightforward to put it on, but things that appear easy sometimes don't end up Hi Darren, you can see from this antenna here, it's just jig. When I got it, it looked like that. I kind of pulled it out a little bit and tried to attach the ground to it, you know. Because uh, I'm not really too sure about this stuff. Got a good little crimp there. Some loops here. There's a wire that goes around here. I don't know why. And then it's attached to a ground. So I thought that that would be the ground. So I attached this onto the wire, but I wasn't sure if it was the inner or the outer, or whatever, you know. Just not uh, too sure about it, you know. So uh, I'm going to see what I can do here.
So of course I installed the antenna, right? That was okay. Still a little kind of tricky, you know? Of course, <laughs> it's short by like 18 inches. So I need 18 inches of slack because this won't reach the radio, you know? So I, I cut the, the line from over there to over here, hoping that I could kind of reconnect them. You know what I mean? But it just looked like jiggy, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I took an old Alpine radio I had. This is from my old Mustang GT, 1988 Mustang GT. Um, five speed, Hertz shifter, 77 millimeter throttle body, uh, Flowmaster, two chamber mufflers, car was so fast I loved it but anyway when you get older you grow out of it and you go buy a family car anyway this was the radio with it it's uh it's an alpine you know one of those you don't remember we, we used to take the radios out of the thing put it back in again and then there were some where you just took the face off you know so they couldn't use it but they could steal the radio anyway and buy another plate and there you go anyway it had one of those uh I haven't used it in like 20 years so I'm throwing it out I know it's an Alpine, but whatever. So I connected a extension to it, you know, the female mate to it, but I wanted to make a good connection. So uh, I'm using the crimpers that uh, my friend Roger McDonald sent me. He sent me a couple of crimpers recently. So I just crimped it on here. Uh, the middle wire's connected and the ground on the outside is connected. And I've got a good insulation between the two. So then I'm gonna wrap this around it. Well, first I'm gonna wrap this around it. Then I'm gonna wrap this around it. Then I'm gonna wrap this again. So it should have a good insulated uh, signal, if you will. And then we'll just uh, plug this into that, right? And hope I get some radio stations.
Here we go. So uh, here's my problem. Okay, as you know, I can't get that coupler on here because it's splined, right? And this has been dropped on the floor, so it's now mushroomed out. So I went and grinded this uh, little chisel, right? I grinded it so it's super sharp on the edge, the end. So I'm just gonna tap it down each each part that's mushroomed. Just try to get the spline back nice and sharp. Recording. So I've got the GoPro camera magnet on the item itself. So you guys are going to feel some vibrations. So I'm just going to do this with every spline. Every groove, just to push it in more. See if that, that coupler will go on here. I pray it does because I checked the prices for the a new... Uh, Shaft, $75. For an entire impeller assembly, $250. Yeah, right. Let's go buy a new machine, you know? So I'm just going to try this. I'm going to go all the way around and see if we can get that thing to fit. Okay, guys. So I've got success. And I'll tell you how. Uh, it didn't work when I just uh, tried to make my own threads, you know, by... By doing that it didn't work because it was still too mushroomed out so i took the grinder right and i put it on a a slight edge you know and i just rotated this and i just smoothed out the ends to make it more tapered you know so then once i was able to get the coupler on here right i don't want to call it a coupler but i guess it is once it got on here right i slightly tapped it on like that right so therefore it made its new splines, you know, at least it grooved out the splines, right? So now it, it can go on all the way. I know I, it can when, when I bang it on, right? And so now this will fit on here. Now uh, I did order a new flange. So here's a flange. And as you can see, it's very worn. It has almost no lip. Theoretically, this would work, but not for that long. So the challenge is to, of course, you can't get this flange out through that way because of the worm gear, right? Uh, I think this is called the worm gear because it looks like a worm, you know? Um, so this has some very rusted, uh, what it looks like hex bolts on here on both sides, pins. Maybe I could just bang them out, I think. Maybe it is just banging them out. So I think I have to bang that out, right? To get this shaft out and this is this, I believe, is also splined. I don't know how I'm going to get this out. You know, I think I think the guy mushroomed this out, and that's the reason why he couldn't get it out before. But this is going to be very challenging. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get this off the spline, you know. It's just like no leverage, no place to hit, no place to, you know what I mean? Because then if you, if you hit this part, this will mushroom out again, unless I stick a bolt in here and, you know, try to ram it out or something like that. But I might damage this again, you know. I'm almost inclined to say that even though I did order a new flange, I'm not going to put it on because honestly, this it is here. It's just the lip is a little worn, that's all. So do I want to go through so much trouble to get this to work when this would probably work? You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe mommy knows. Now here's the auger shaft. Um, I got this one side of the gearbox off of this side because I had to grind everything clean because there's just so much rust on here, right? And build up that it won't come off. Uh, I had to do this side as well, but this side is just not budging. I want to get this, this side of the sandwich off so I can get that stripped um, gear out of there. See how stripped that is? It's all rounded. Uh, I believe there's a key in there in the keyway and then you have to just bang it out one side or the other. But I, you can't bang it out unless you get this sandwich off, you know. And uh, I'm kind of scared to bang this because uh, I've seen people break this. You know, it's, it's not that strong. You have to evenly bang it down, not one side. If you bang one side, this thing will crack, you know. So I'm just kind of scared to do that. I just soaked it with penetrating uh, oil from my friends over at this Oil Products. Let it soak for a little bit, see if it'll kind of budge, you know? So it's been soaking for a bit. I'm gonna take, take these uh, channel locks, see? It's starting to move. 
There you go. Check that out. I tell you, I gotta tell you, you guys have seen me use this penetrating oil from Lucas Oil Products for a long time. Has it ever failed me? I don't know what they put in this stuff, man. Look at that. Unbelievable. Now, now I gotta get that off. Holy. This gear is done, Ski! Yep, this gear is done, Ski. Kind of moving, you can see the key now in the keyway. So it's going down a little. <laughs> Why am I using that? I have a hammer. Hey, look. Yeah, baby! Success! Success! I tell you, success! Oh, man. Bonus! Beer. There we go. There it is. There is a successful removal of the gearbox and uh, auger gear from the auger shaft. Now I'm just going to uh, grind this down a little bit, clean it up so that when I get my parts, my new, gee, I wonder if it goes on this way or that way. I'll remember, you know why? Because here's all the bang marks on the top, so I know it's this way. So I should put this actually back on so I'll, I'll, I'll remember that, you know? Cool. Thanks to my friend Samuel Sandoval over at Red Oaks Mowers for the drill. And he also got me this. So thank you very much, Sam. I promised you since you first bought me gifts that I was gonna use them on all my videos, and I do. That's pretty cool. 
Now I ne all I need to do is wait for my parts and it looks like we can get this thing assembled. So the auger itself has some rust buildup on the edges as they normally do this as well. I'm gonna wipe it all down a little bit, see if I can find some uh, Cub Cadet mustard yeller and just maybe go over this with a slight coat of um, some Rust-Oleum mustard colored paint. I believe this is the same color <coughs> as the Cub Cadet. <coughs> this super clean is very potent. It works. So I managed to get the pins out but, uh, and this thing actually rotates. However, getting this flange off of this spline is another story, almost impossible without damaging it. So I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna go with this flange right there, the worn one. It is worn, but it still has a lip, you know? Even though it's a little worn, but it's still, it'll probably function just fine. Uh, I did order one too, you know, I bought one, so I just don't think I can get this shaft out of here, that's all, because this is splined on, you know? I just don't know how I'm going to remove it without damaging this. Maybe I'll try sticking a bolt in here, not the actual bolt, but another bolt that fits, and just bang it a little, just to see. But in the meantime, I'm going to first give it a, a coat of paint. I did find some uh, Cub Cadet mustard yellow so maybe that'll work Take my word for it. Go try a bottle of Super Clean. It really works. And then you guys know that penetrating oil really works. Thanks a lot to my sponsors, Super Clean and Lucas Oil Products. Anyway, today we got a new antenna, right? And it works. How about it? Uh, also, we took the auger and impeller assembly out, painted a little. Weather's cold, doesn't really stick very well. Have the rust parts you need like primer and stuff. I'm not gonna do all that. Uh, just gave it a little bit more of a coating to protect it from more rust. Uh, got the gearbox off, got the um, worm gear off, cleaned up, and uh, ready for the parts that I ordered to put that auger impeller shaft gearbox back together again and maybe get this baby going someday soon. But I uh, hope you guys had a good New Year's. Hope 2021 is a much better year than 2020. Honestly, aside from the pandemic and the economy and stuff, 2020 was good for YouTubers because everybody stayed home. There was nothing to watch on TV but reruns. They weren't making new movies. They weren't making... The lousy movies were... The B and C movies were taken right off the shelf and put right onto Netflix and, you know, streaming services because they weren't good enough for the movie theaters and even some that were good enough for the movie theaters nobody's gonna watch them you got to release them so they put them out on Netflix so uh, youtubers did very well this year because a lot of people were watching YouTube me included I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's episode we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers guys enjoy the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell 
That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.